Gonna go right off the bat by saying that if you don't like this design for Shikano and Heizo, that's cool. The purpose of me making this video is simply to contribute to the discussion by explaining why I personally like this design, and why I think it fits very well with the personality of Heizo that has already been minorly established. The main criticism I've seen floating around is about his color palette, and I get it because honestly, I felt the same way upon my first impression, but it grew on me a lot. For a majority of Genshin's playable characters, their color scheme resembles the element of their vision. And while I think most agree that having all characters divided into these colors will get stale after a while, it just looks really good when the character matches with how their attacks look. Now, there's actually a bit of leeway in terms of adjusting an element's color, which I think is most evident with Yai Miko. Electro is obviously purple, but Yai's abilities lean more into a pink shade to represent Sakura trees. But of course, this can only go so far, so at the end of the day, Heizo's colors are going to heavily contrast Animo no matter what. However, Heizo certainly isn't the first Genshin character to go against the typical matching, and while yes, red and green are complementary colors, meaning they are as contrasting as you can get, he's not the first in that either. So when we look at designs like Kazuha, Yunjin, and Goro, what is the difference between them and Heizo? If I had to pinpoint one thing, I would say that it's the uniformity of the complementary color across the character. From head to toe, the color is present, making it feel like a bold but very deliberate decision. On the other hand, Heizo's non-neutral colors are very isolated, with a lot of red on top with his hair, and a lot of mustard yellow on the bottom with his pants. This is where I feel most people find his design to be off-putting, because of the combination of the steep color contrast and color isolation. I think it's a valid criticism against the design, but at the same time I feel the effect is slightly exaggerated by the way the English Twitter crops character art. If we go to the Japanese Twitter, this art gives us the full picture, and we can get a better idea of how the whole design becomes just a bit more cohesive. The gold trimmings and red highlights become much more apparent, better complementing the main colors than the subtler details around the torso. So while this doesn't necessarily fix the color isolation, I do think it helps alleviate some of its impact, and I think most will find his look much more appealing once we get to see him in game. The second aspect of the design some have been skeptical about is the fact that there isn't much to signify him being a detective. First though, we need to remember to get into the mindset that as an Inazuman character, he wouldn't be modeled after the western conception of a detective. This is super clear when you look at his jite, an Edo period Japanese weapon used by policemen. Because in feudal Japan it was a crime punishable by death to bring a sword into the shogun's palace, they were forced to use non-bladed weapons. So when the jite grew to be synonymous with police authority, it was essentially equivalent to a badge, representing someone on official business that you should be wary or respectful of. So that's a really great detail to include, but other than that there's really nothing that stands out besides maybe the rope on the shoulder for, I guess, tying up criminals. Is that sufficient enough though? Well, by Genshin standards and design philosophy, it definitely is. It seems that character designs in this game tend to heavily prioritize establishing the tone of a character rather than telling you everything there is to know about who they are and what they do. Like, just by Lisa's design, you would never know that she's a librarian. But for every single character in this game, you can tell just by their design which ones are playful and which ones are serious. For Heizo, it's no different at all. One NPC mentions Heizo to be her distant cousin, and states that he doesn't like to abide by the rules and always gets himself into trouble. Other character voice lines about him further characterize him as a successful detective, but a very unconventional one. Shikanoin and I may be colleagues, but I have few positive words to say about him. He seems preoccupied with his personal schemes while official duties take second place. The only reason I have not sought to bring him into line so far is that his investigations deliver results. Ugh, he is such a headache. So yeah, I feel that his loose open clothing aligns very well with his seemingly hyperactive and carefree nature. This may be anecdotal, but I feel that 4 star characters across the board have less extravagant designs when compared to 5 stars, but also the plainness may be an intentional nod to him going undercover for the sake of doing investigations. One quote from his announcement even describes him by saying Heizo seems like an ordinary young man, but is actually the undisputed number one detective in the Tenryo Commission. I feel that this video may give the impression that I will defend the designs of any Genshin character, but for the record there are ones I don't like, 
It just so happens that I really like Hazos, and so I wanted to justify why. So whether you think my points are valid or not is up to you, but either way, thanks for watching.